Hello, my friends in What's Up in Makeup Land. Hello, how are you? Hopefully, you're doing well this morning. I have my coffee, and hopefully, you guys are ready to chat. If you're watching this on replay, meaning you come back later after the chat is done being live, thank you for coming back. And please keep in mind that this is going to be looking at screen to talk to people that are talking in the chat. And that way, it's not just my information you're getting, but you're getting it from 70 other people over here. So I'm going to be reading their comments out loud so we can all learn together and grow in this land of knowledge of makeup awesomeness and not so awesomeness so we can all save each other money so that's why i love these chats is because it isn't just about me it's about everybody it's about um you know all of us working together to um to learn about makeup so we learn more that way when we work together <laughs> instead of one person spouting out all of the information so i'm just going to take a second to say hi to people that are here um, Barbara says, I always watch the reruns, but this will be the first time I get to watch live. Yay. Hello, Barbara in New Hampshire. Hi, Jennifer. Good morning. I'm doing pretty well. I got an extra hour of sleep last night, which is sweet, which means I got five hours instead of four, which is like, yay. <laughs> Makes me happy. Hello, Indie Kitty One. Good to see you. Good morning to Sammy. Good morning to Leanne. I got some coffee and leftover M&Ms. Perfect. Perfect. I've just got my coffee. John came up and gave me a Rolo earlier he's like mommy I saved you this Rolo my four-year-old and I was like I love you so much right now like you've no idea so I already had my Rolo I had my breakfast which was leftover sushi and I had some uh, I've got some coffee so we're ready to go good morning to Elena in Delaware good morning to Liz in Oregon my girl Liz Everybody's eating candy this morning. Good morning to Leslie. Good morning to Tabitha. Um, Sammy says, what's for breakfast? I'm hungry. Having a smoothie for now. Yeah, I had sushi. I had cold sushi. And it was amazing. Um, Mesa, I'm going to say. Mesa, good morning. Does anyone know when the live chat is supposed to start? It is now. They said 10 a.m. Thank you so much, Sammy, for clarifying. Good morning to Deepa in India. Hello, Deepa. So good to see you, my friend. Steph, good morning. Um, I am in an Eastern time zone, so thank you very much for clarifying, Tabitha. Uh, let's see. Candy hangover for everybody. Uh, let's see. Hold on a minute. Lots of good mornings. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to say good morning to everybody because I want to go ahead and jump in to the discussion. So good morning to everybody. I'm sorry if I didn't get to saying your ch your name, Emily and Ari. I'm so glad this is your first time here. I'm so happy that you're here. And Marlene, I'm definitely feeling that candy hangover. Hi to Krista. So good to see you at uh, mymonthlyobsessions.com. So good to see you, my dear. Good morning to Tyler. Uh, Tina says she doesn't have any candy. No kids or no trick-or-treating in her area. Oh, see, then you go today. That's what you do is you get the candy sales today. My husband and my kids just left to go to the Halloween store to go get 50% uh, off Halloween decorations for next year because they want it to be epic next year. Last did it this if you were on if you're on my Periscope you saw our decorations out front that John did but he wants it to be even better. So what to know it's high end is it just a price point? Well for the for the purpose of this show it is just a price point. Um, technically high end is like Burberry, um, you know YSL, uh, Kevin Aquan. Uh, when you get to that kind of ridiculous price point like Dior, but we're gonna. We're going to clarify high end. That's why I have it in quotation marks. For the purposes of this video, high end is going to be anything that's more expensive than drugs. Anything you would get at Sephora, anything you would get on the prestige section at Ulta. So this goes as um, as inexpensive as like Benefit, um, you know, La Roc, Too Faced, like those kinds of price range, Urban Decay. We're going to call that high end for the purpose of this video because, you know, there are, I would say the majority of people in the country, that is expensive. You know, like most people in our country do not get Dior and all of that. So I feel like if I only focused on those products, number one, I'd have like six products to talk about. And number two, most people it wouldn't apply to. So we're going to call high end anything that is more expensive than drugstore, Sephora, Ulta Prestige. Um, when you go into the department stores and you go to the counters, we're going to say Mac as high end, um, all of that. So, oh no, blurry. Let me see. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> um, you can go ahead and see if you can change your quality. Um, I don't know. Ooh, uh, my connection is strong. I don't know why it would be blurry. That's so weird. I don't know. Ooh. 
hopefully it's nothing on my end because I don't know how to fix it if it is. Anybody else having issues? Every okay, audio is fine too, but the oh man, yucky. Oh man, small too and out of focus. No way. Let's see if I can change the settings. See, mine says it goes up to 720 HD. So see if you can change your quality. Picture is less blurry because mine goes up to 720p for quality. So if you click on that and if it doesn't fix, okay, it looks like seems like that's working for some people. All right. Thank you to those of you who are being so patient for the uh, conversation here. Uh, Angie, so good to have you here first time. Yes. Thank you, Steph, for um, doing that and refreshing. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. So let's go ahead and start jumping into some products. Now, what I did this time because I did have an extra hours of sleep, I got everything set up. You can see I got a bunch of things behind me for us to talk about. These are some of my high-end products. Um, and I figured we would start with, like, just talking about kind of the, the way we put on our face. So let me see. If it doesn't come in a description box, then you put on a wish list. <laughs> yes, Summer, I'm with you. All right. So primer-wise, I feel like it's very rare for me to find a primer, like a face primer specifically, that I feel like is worth paying extra for like like this one this is the cover effects illuminating primer it's a nice primer but for me personally with my normal skin i don't see a lot of difference with primer with face primer um you know i see a little bit of a difference but i don't feel like it's enough to spend a lot of money like if somebody was getting started in makeup i would tell them unless you have like super oily skin or super dry skin i would say skip the face primer i don't know is that just me like am i the only one i don't know i'm curious to see what's going to happen in chat over here um but face primer i'm just not not feeling it. I use it. Like I feel like with dry skin, you know, you get one of those moisturizing face primers and it helps. And I think that's nice. And I feel like with oily skin, you know, you get like a silicone based primer and that can help. Um, I do like this cover effects primer, but I don't know if like it's worth the price. You know what I mean? The difference is worth the price, even though I do enjoy it, if that makes sense. So for face primer, it's kind of like, um, for, uh, see, Jackie says a primer is a must for her. Um, and Nikki says that she really likes the hourglass primer. She has two deluxe samples and can't lie, probably going to purchase a full size. KJ says um, the pore filler for her nose, but no other. So pore fillers, I can totally understand that, totally get that. Um, Tyler says she's super picky about primers because she has super dry skin. Um, and then Krista is agreeing with Nikki with the hourglass primer. Ashley says she has very dry skin and without a primer her foundation doesn't stay. So it seems like we're kind of on the same thing, that normal skin we may not need it as much. Marlene's talking about the, the Polish Choice Oily Skin Primer and she loves it. Um, I'm, it's going really, really fast. <laughs> so I'm going to go say as many as I can. Um, Tyler's saying she loves the It Cosmetics uh, Serum Primer. Works great for dry skin. Nikki says some iridescence or something in it is just amazing. Um, Tabs, Tabitha, this is different Tabitha. Tabitha says there's two Tabithas, now Tabitha. Yes. She has the Makeup Forever Primer, but she doesn't know how she feels about it. See, that's the way I feel about a lot of primers. You know, like I have this one. Let me see. See, now I'm not prepared. All right, here we go. Here, here, here. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing Primer. I personally really like this. I feel like that it fills in pores. Like, John bought this. My husband, John, bought this when he was playing around with makeup, and he has bigger pores than I do. And he, we were trying it on our hands to see, like, how it would work. And this stuff really did work, but I've heard a lot of people complain that they don't like this primer. So I don't know. I don't know. As far as eye primer, though, I'm going to go ahead and skip down because I wish I've read every single comment. This would take forever. Um, and Mesa says, I don't wear primer most days. I don't see much need for it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the makeup industry tries to convince us that we need every single product that they sell in their line. And I feel like with primers, normal skin people don't necessarily need primers. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like the oily skin girls and the dry skin girls really feel like they need it, but us normal skin girls are not really digging it. Annie says, uh, when I use primers, I find that my foundation moves around. I don't know how much to apply. But the general rule that I learned from Wayne Goss is you put on as little as possible to cover a very thin layer of your skin for face primer. Um, Andy Katie One says she likes face primer, um, but NYX is good enough for her. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and move over. Tyler says I, I want to try the Hangover RX primer. It's next to try on her list. Leanne says she's been using, using the CoverGirl Outlast Rimmel Stay Matte primers. Both are working pretty well for her oily T zone. All right, let's go ahead and move on to eye primers. Now, the eye primer that I pulled out was the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Now, this I feel like does make my eyeshadow last longer. If you have oily lids, I feel like eyeshadow primer is kind of important for you. 
Um, at least from people that I've heard that have oily lids, that eyeshadow primer is like an absolute must. I've also heard that people with dry skin, um, that they feel like they need an eyeshadow primer to make the the um, the product stick. Uh, for me personally, I do feel like that eye primer is something that makes my eyeshadow last longer. But if I was just starting off in makeup, would I say that eye primer is a must for me? I would say no. Just because, like, you know, if you're working an eight-hour day, your eyeshadow is going to fade during the day. It's really not something that I feel like you have to wear. You know what I mean? Unless you have oily skin or dry skin, like we were saying, like especially oily lids. Now, the one thing, though, that I feel like is a must to have, at least for me, is a pri found, is an eye primer that mutes out discoloration in my eyelids. Um, you know, I just read a comment. Uh, let's see, Liz says the Smashbox primer water is great for normal skin. It makes her makeup last a long time. Awesome. And then... Um, Christine wants to know if, she, if I have an opinion on the Lorac eyeshadow primer. I feel like it doesn't do anything for me. That's just me, though. Um, but anyway, so the, the Urban Decay, I feel like it does work. I feel like it's definitely worth it for people that have problem eyelids. The anti-aging one, if Fizzy Pop is saying the anti-aging one, I agree, I like the anti-aging one better than the original. That's just me personally. I feel like if I use it consistently, I do see less wrinkles in my eyelids. And I know you think that you're looking at me like, girlfriend, you don't have any wrinkles. But my eyelids are definitely not as taut. I am 37. So my eyelids are not as taut as they used to be. And they, um, they definitely need like the anti-aging thing. It definitely works. Um, but what I was saying about the discoloration, um, I feel like like Max Paint Pot and Painterly. I feel like this is totally worth the hype. Every bit of the hype that Max Paint Pot and Painterly gets. It's really really nice to mute out discoloration in my eyelids. Now, as far as somebody with, I saw I have an old swatch from yesterday. Excuse that. As far as someone with a deeper skin tone, I would imagine this would also work well, just because it's nice to have like a neutral base to start, almost like the way a lot of people use the the NYX pencil and milk. Uh, I would imagine this would kind of do the same thing for a deeper skin tone, just to kind of give a little bit of a lighter base to really lay those colors on top. Uh, but I definitely, definitely love this a lot. Uh, Leslie says she needs to try the Urban Decay Eye Primer for oily lids. Eyeshadow crease is bad. Um, the other thing is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. I found performs for me exactly the same as the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It would just be which packaging and which company you like better. That's my personal experience with it. Uh, Tina says she doesn't like the Lorac Eye Primer at all, but I've heard some people um, that it does work for. Um, Angie says she likes the Urban Decay Primer in E in, which has, I believe, like a yellowy kind of tinge to it. Uh, Yesenia says she likes the Milani one. And there's really great eye primers from the drugstore. That's a great point, Yesenia. Um, so, yeah, um, Yesenia said, you know, that the Milani, there's lots of great drugstore options, and we did drugstore options last week. So if you're curious about some awesome drugstore options that are just as good as the high-end ones, definitely check out the chat from last, last week. Um, Liz says, Jen, you're not 37. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. I thought you are in your late 20s. Thank you so much. No, I'm 37. Sometimes I think I miscounted. I'm like, I got to figure that out again. 1978. Yeah, I'm 37, man. Like, how did that happen? I don't even know. So when people that talk about anti-aging, they're like, you don't know anything about anti-aging. And it's like, dude, yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right. Um, oh, Tyler, Benefit Air Patrol. Who did I watch a review on? She hated. Oh, you know what it was? It was... Um, Oh, what's her name? Um, Hot and Flashy. Um, I forget what her real name is, but Hot and Flashy did a, a review on the Benefit Air Patrol, and she hated it. She said it was horrible. And if you're not following, if you're, um, you know, especially if you are my age and older, uh, if you're not following Hot and Flashy on YouTube, you have to. She is fabulous for that over, especially that over 40 um, makeup lover out there. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, Elena says, Jen, which one creases the least? I can't find one. That is a question for the chat because my eyeshadows very, very rarely crease. Sometimes cream shadows will crease on me, but powder eyeshadows never crease on me. So um, uh, Barbara says she graduated in 78. It was a good year. Um, so definitely if you have oily lids and shadows crease on you, please, please, please tag, um, do at Elena, A-L-A-I-N-A, -A -A, and her last name is Wesel, W-E-Z-E-L. Can you at her, so give her some, Angie from Hot and Flashy, thank you. Give her some advice on 
primers that do not crease. And do me a favor too, those of you that are in here that are giving these great suggestions, if you take a moment, the chat window disappears after the chat is over. So if you had like a gem that you shared, come back after the chat is over and put it into the comment section down below so we don't lose your um we don't lose your your great information there. Um, Yesenia says, Jen, I bet you don't spend a lot of time in the sun. Number one beauty secret. I used to. I used to when I was in, up and through college, and then I was like, wait a second, I think this is a bad idea, and I stopped spending time in the sun. But anyway, all right. So now we need to move on because it is ten fifteen, and we're going to move into foundations and face powders. All right. Uh, so foundations. These were the two I was going well three. These are the three I was going to recommend to you guys for higher end foundations. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I used this in the What's On My Face video that went up live today on What's Up Makeup uh, This uh, Estee Lauder Double Wear has been around forever. It's famous for a reason. It's absolutely amazing if you want a more full coverage foundation. Highly recommend. My shade is Fresco 01. And then also the brand new Too Faced Born This Way foundation. Uh, I really, really love this a lot. My sister-in-law just bought this. Uh, she heard a lot of hype about it and I told her how amazing it was so she just bought it she really likes it a lot um, it's a really really nice foundation the packaging is just gorgeous totally totally worth it and then this here the um, the hourglass immaculate liquid powder foundation this is actually my favorite foundation that I've ever used um, I just love the way that my skin looks after I use it Mem remember please keep in mind that I have normal skin um, the double wear uh, is is kind of in between matte and it's definitely not dewy um, but it's not matte either. Like it's kind of like a, a skin looking finish. And I feel like that's what these two really give you with that skin looking finish. Um, the the Kat Von D Locket, I believe, is more full coverage, Violetta, than the um than the Estee Lauder Double Wear. That was her question. Um, go if um, KJ, if you go to go, if you have a Sephora, hopefully you have a Sephora near you, go in and ask them for a sample of the Born This Way is what I'm hoping that you'll be able to do. But uh, my memory serves me. You don't have a Sephora near you. Um, I wish I could give you some. <laughs> I wish I could. Um, oh, Michelle, I'm so glad that you made it. Uh, Jenny says she loves the Guerlain Lingerie de Peau, and that's her Holy Grail high-end foundation. And I've heard wonderful things about that foundation. If I had a million dollars, I would go there. Yesenia says that Makeup Forever Ultra HD it was totally worth the hype. We, um, she, Yesenia was brave enough to wait in line for that at, uh, at Generation Beauty. I'm very proud of her. I did not wait in line for it. I wasn't gonna wait two hours for it. <laughs> I just, my feet were killing me. My foot's still paying for waiting, you know, standing around at Generation Beauty. I just couldn't do it. So good for you. I'm so glad that you got it and that you really liked it and that it was worth it. You do have a Sephora. Great, KJ. Go in and get a sample, girlfriend. Go in and say, hey, have them color match you. Get a sample and try it and see what you think. Um, but yeah, I really love the Hourglass Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation because I really do feel like it dries down to a powder finish. And I really like that because it helps me skip a step. Uh, every once in a while, I end up using setting powder anyway just because it feels weird, like not having a setting powder. But I love this. I wish it was just a little bit closer to my skin tone. It's not quite my skin tone. It's a little, little, little that's much too dark. So, um, Shannon says, I don't care for full coverage either because I don't want to hide my freckles. I love the bourgeois healthy mix serum. Nice Shannon. Um, I, you know, and, and honestly, like when I use these, I put on like a medium coverage amount. You can build them up to full coverage and you, I can still see my freckles through it. So, um, yes. Uh, Valerie says her all-time favorite foundation is the Tarte BB Tinted Moisturizer, super full coverage actually, and really long-lasting, nice. Um, Sophie, Sophie wants to know which is better, the Born This Way or the Naked Foundation. Naked Foundation is going to give you a more sheer coverage. So I've heard great things about the Naked Foundation. I personally haven't tried it, but I know that this is going to give you more coverage than that because I've heard that that definitely is a light to medium coverage where this is more of a medium, you can build it up to close to full. Um, and then Tina says, if you're normal to dry skin, the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation is beautiful. See, collective brain of makeup awesomeness. That's what this is. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and put these back, and I'm going to tell you about one that I don't feel like is totally worth the hype, which was the Bare Skin, the Bare Minerals Bare Skin uh, Pure Brightening Serum Foundation. I feel like this breaks up on my skin during the day, and that's pretty bad for a normal skin person because I feel like this would break up on an oily skin person. It shouldn't be breaking up on me. You know what I mean? Like, I get it when you've got oils on your skin, it would break up a foundation, but I don't know. This did not work great for me. I still use it sometimes, and I feel like if I use it with a, like, I really make sure I put a good powder on with it, it works, but this is not my favorite. It's not my favorite. 
Uh, Fort Worth Famous says custom cover drops are her life right now. You know, this is the thing about custom cover drops. I got a sample at Sephora and it did not work because it's not in a drop form. Like I had to figure out how much to use with my foundation. It was stupid. So I think it's one of those things you just can't get a sample of. You just got to jump in and get it unless your sampler has like a little dropper on there. Nami says born this way uh, was terrible on her extreme combo skin, both dry and oily areas. That is really good to know. Thank you so much for that, Nanny, because I don't have that, so I don't know that. So that's really wonderful. Michelle says, has anyone tried the, U the YSL Youth Fluid? It's so, so good. That's good to know. I, well, I don't, well, that's good to know, like I know. No, I, I, I haven't tried it. If anybody's tried it, definitely mention it. Tina says, agree, Jen, on the bare minerals, bare skin. I returned it. I kept it because I thought it was going to be okay, and it wasn't. Um, Beauty Hall 411 says she loves the Dior Air Flash Foundation, but I she uses it only for special events. Yeah, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. Um, let's see. Chelsea says, the only high foundation I tried was the Clinique Super Balance, and I really liked it. Great for dry skin. That's really good to know. Krista says, Jen, I feel like with foundations, you really need to get a sample of it. You can ask 100 girls what their favorite foundation is, and you'll get 100 different responses. It depends on so much. Absolutely, because your skin responds to product differently depending on how much it sucks up the product, you know, moisture-wise or, you know, it dripping off your skin, you know, if you have oily skin. I totally, totally agree with you. But I feel like there are certain foundations that seem to work well for more than just one skin type that are more versatile for lots of different skin types and I feel like definitely the, S if the Estee Lauder, Lauder Double Wear I've never heard a single person say they don't like Estee Lauder Double Wear I challenge anybody to say they don't like the Estee Lauder Double Wear because I would be shocked I'd be absolutely shocked so I don't know I mean unless it's the problem is that it's too full coverage so um, Emily and Ari say we like the benefit oxygen. Wow. It just slid around. Uh, it just slid around even with a primer. So you didn't like it. It just slid around even with a primer. Oh, my goodness. Um, Yesenia says Sephora spray dupe for uh, the it's a four spray is a dupe for the Dior hot the Dior air flash. That's good to know Yesenia. Thank you. I mean, I do definitely think. Um, wait a minute. I'm getting confused. I definitely think that most foundations are definitely to the individual person but i do think that some that some are more likely to work for more people than others i you know i traded for this somebody that subscribed to me on youtube i traded them on edif for this so i traded something i forgot what i traded for this so i didn't pay for it i gave them used makeup and they gave me used makeup i know that's weird but it was pretty much brand new i think she used it once and she realized it wasn't her skin tone and we ended up trading things so i didn't pay for it so i honestly don't know um but anyway, two birds, obviously. But okay, anyway, all right. So it is now 1023. We need to move on from foundations. Now, for powders, the only powder that I brought out that I felt like was worth the hype is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. Um, I feel like this is definitely worth the hype. I love this face powder. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm really feeling like it's starting to die on me because it's getting old. And I think I need to get a new one. But I really do love this, this um, powder, face powder. I love it. It's wonderful. Do I think that it's so much better than um, than drugstore that you need it? No, I don't. But if you want to buy a high end powder, it's a good one. It's a good one. But I do feel like a lot of the drugstore powders are just as good for me and my normal skin. Um, the Rimmel Stay Matte is a fantastic powder. Like. I would buy that and this, and I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference, to be completely honest. Some face powders are extremely finely milled, which helps them to kind of blend into your skin better, but I personally haven't tried a ton of face powders, so that's kind of my least favorite thing to talk about in this show. Uh, so I don't really, I'm sure you guys will have much better ideas in the chat as far as face powder, but I don't want to spend too much time on face powder. Um, um, I don't even know how to pronounce that. R we'll say RJ um, says Laura Geller balance and brighten evens out my skin without looking powdery, dry skin here. And I did just get that, and I am enjoying that very, very much. The um, the Laura Geller balance and brighten. Um, Mia said she made a chat. Hi, Mia. Okay, so we're gonna stop on the face powder because we only have 35 minutes left. Yeah, everyone's talking about how much they love the Rimmel um, Rimmel Stay Matte, and Tyler doesn't use face powder. Girlfriend, you do you do you. It's all good. Don't feel the peer pressure. You do you. If it's working without it, then don't use it. You do you. Um, all right, let's move on and let's go into, um, let's see, what should we do next? Should we do, let's stick with the face and let's do blushes, contour, bronzer, highlighters. Um, 
So let's go into blushes first. What did I bring up for blush? The NARS blushes. Okay, I'm gonna get shot. Totally gonna get shot for these. I am not a huge fan of NARS blushes. I'm really not. And maybe it's just the ones that I have, but I don't think they're worth the hype. I have the NARS Virtual Domination Palette from last year. I have the um, Dual Intensity Blush in Fervor. I returned one of these that I didn't like at all. I knew I wasn't going to use it. But I feel like they take work to put on. They build up, but it's like, I don't know, man. I'm just not, I'm not the biggest fan of NARS blushes. I feel like they're overpriced. I don't know. Like maybe it's just my skin tone, my skin type or my tone or something, but I don't enjoy these. Like I don't like, I like, okay. I know that it names are great, but deep throat. I like, I like this one. That's the only one in this palette that I use regularly. Laguna is nice. But I wouldn't say like everybody has to own Laguna or you'll die. You know what I mean? Like it's a nice bronzer. I mean, this is this is a very famous one, but it's definitely not for contouring for me. I feel like it's too orangey for contour for me. I don't know. That's probably not even showing up. Like I can't even get it to swatch on my skin. Like, and that's not really a good determination of whether something works or not, whether it swatches on your skin. But it's like there just isn't enough oomph to it. There isn't enough pizzazz to the NARS. I, I don't. I would not purchase any more NARS. I won't. I, I feel like NARS as a brand like is not my favorite. Like everything I get from NARS, I feel like I'm ending up being let down. Like I end up like just like I I don't know I don't know what that is. And I feel really bad because I know a lot of people love NARS blush. Um, NARS and orgasm. Uh, uh, Tyler said it's nothing special. I have orgasm too, and I don't. It's nothing. Like I said, I mean it's pretty good. And then Krista says, every time I swatch them, it's like nothing showing up. Exactly. That's the way I'm feeling. Exactly the same thing. Um, Tasha says, oh, Tashia. Tashia, I think. Tarte blushes. Oh, let me scroll up because I wanted to see what she said. Um, she says, I love Tarte blushes. Not sure about the NARS. I only have NARS madly and I love it. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad that that works for you. Um, I don't have that one, so I can't speak to that one. Um, Chelsea wants to know, does anyone have any recommend recommendations for blushes for deeper skin tones? So at Chelsea Jackson for that, please, please, please. Um, ambient blushes, the ambient blushes. I got the ambient blush. I think I got a blush. Yes, I got one blush and I ended up returning it because I felt like it was overpriced for what it was, but I can see why people love them. I totally can see why people love them. Um, Nikki to Clinique cheek pop blushes. This is the thing. Everybody agrees with you, Nikki. Everybody agrees with you. I tried one and I returned it. It wasn't pigmented enough for me. I don't know which one it was, but I got rid of it. I didn't like it. And, and no one agrees with me on this, Nikki. Just don't know that no one agrees with me. Everyone agrees with you. Uh, Benefit blushes are Jenna's favorites. Um, let's see. Fizzy Pop says she loves the Clinique because they look like flowers. Um, Nikki says she loves Cola Pop. I need to try them again. Maybe I just got a bum one or something. Betty says, good morning, Jen. Snowing here in Alberta, Canada. Oh, my gosh. She likes the Urban Decay, but it's not her favorite. Um, all right. Let's talk about some more blushes. So did I not bring out enough blushes here? The Tarte. Let's talk about Tarte. I love Tarte blushes. I really, really do. When I first started buying Tarte blushes, I wasn't quite sure because of the building thing. Also, Tarte blushes, I feel like don't swatch necessarily very well. But man, they're beautiful to build on the cheeks. I got the, um, the this right here that I want to do a review video on. This was from the Tarte website. And I really, really like these blushes a lot. This is one their holiday collection for blushes. I personally would recommend this over the palette. That's just me because if there's one shade that doesn't work for you you could pass it on to a friend and then just keep the ones that do work for you also I feel like I'm more likely to reach for one of these than I am a palette that's just me so I really like this set a lot from Tarte this one's available now I got this with um, a gift card that Tarte had given everyone that got the Generation Beauty swag bags I like to put that in there when I don't pay for something I like to make sure I tell you I did not pay for this but they don't know that I'm telling you about this they have no idea so it has nothing to do with them um, but Tarte blushes are a yes, definitely. Um, let's go ahead. Oh, well, let me see if there's any other comments. Uh, Krista says, I mean, nothing comes off of my brush and I have to build it up and build it up to nothing. Yes, I'm with you, Krista. I'm totally with you. Totally with you. Um, KJ said the set looks nice. Yeah, I mean, it is a really nice set. It's it's very nice. All right. Um, and then um, Mia is saying that she agrees with the Tarte blushes. And then Emily and Ari says, any suggestion on blushes for fair skin? Our collection is very minimal. 
Um, Tarte blushes really and truly are really, really nice. They're very nice. Um, I would recommend the Kat Von D blushes, but they're now discontinued. She's coming out with the blush duos. If you haven't seen the show yet, um, she's coming out with the, they're like contour duos for blushes. I'm curious to see what that formula is going to be like, but I can't recommend the Kat Von D blushes anymore because... They don't exist anymore, which makes me super, super sad. And the balm blushes. The balm blushes are fabulous. You can get them at Kohl's. Kohl's online or Holt Look. Um, every three to four months, they're on Holt Look. They were on in September, so expect them again in December. -ish. September, October, November, December. Yeah, like December, probably December before the holidays, they'll have the balm back on Holt Look is what I would imagine, December or January. Um, and then Angie saying Milani is a good drugstore blush. Absolutely. And then Amy says she loves her Tarte Amazonian clay um, blush. Yes. Get it on Holt Look because you get a half price on Holt Look for the balm. Who is that? Sierra? You have to do it. You have to do it. Um, Krista says the Sephora Ombre Blush Palette is really nice. I've heard great things about the Sephora Ombre Blush Palette. Absolutely. Um, Angie says she's going to Kohl's later to buy the balm. It's it's really nice. I think you're really going to like it. All right, let's get into some highlighters and contour and stuff. That's really important to get into that. So as far as highlighters, if I were to recommend any highlighters, I would honestly recommend um, the Becca, um, the, what is this, this formula right here. This formula is the Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed. I've heard the poured is also nice, but I really like the pressed. Uh, this one is in opal. This one is in champagne pop. Champagne pop does not last on my skin, but it's beautiful initially. If you don't mind reapplying this, I really, really like it a lot. Um, the bomb always has a 50% uh, site sale on Cyber Monday. Thank you so much for that, Krista. So Krista says, wait till Cyber Monday and then go to thebalm.com and get the 50% off. That is awesome. Thank you, Krista. I forgot about that. Um, but yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. I do have some other highlighters. Oh, I'm having an avalanche back there. Avalanche. I have the liquid ones. I don't like the liquid ones quite as much. I'm losing everything. Not into the trash. Not into the trash. Um, I don't like the liquid ones quite as much as I like the um, the powder ones. I like the powder ones much, much, much better. Um, and then one thing I wanted to show you that I'm absolutely in love with is this one by Ofra. Now, Ofra is more of like a makeup artist brand, but I'm so in love with this blush stripes. I just had to mention it. Just so amazing. So amazing. Like, oh, my gosh. Talk about highlighted for deeper skin tones. Like, look at this. Look at that. Can you imagine that? On like a super deep skin tone like how amazing would that be I keep forgetting to use this on my eyes I want to use this as an eyeshadow because there's no way this would be a highlighter on me that would just be a hot mess on me but just I've used these three and I love all three of these just, oh amazing totally worth it one that's not um, oh that's contour one moment let me see if there's any other highlights oh here the hourglass ambient lighting palette the original one um, Honestly, honestly, if I were going to choose between this and the Becca, I get the Becca. That's just me. I like, I like a highlighters better than these. I feel like these don't pop as much. If you're looking for a little bit more of a subtle highlight, like if you're, let's see, um, if you are looking for a little bit more of a subtle highlight, then you'll probably like the Hourglass better. If you want a pop and highlight, you want to get the Becca. That's my opinion. Um, I don't use this as much because I feel like I can't see it as much. I don't know. I like the Becca ones better. That's just me. That's just me. Um, Mia says, yes, I love highlighters. I love the Becca for highlighters. I just got the Jaclyn Hill palette, but I haven't used it yet. I think the colors look weird in that. Like, I, I'm not attracted to that that Becca palette that just came out with the, with, with the champagne pop in it. I'm not attracted to it for some reason. I don't know why. I'm just not. Um, Amy says, I don't know if it's considered high end, but I really enjoy my jewel highlighter. I enjoy my jewel highlighter too. I can get it out. I believe it's right here. Biome highlighting powder in glow by Julep. It has some glitter in it though. So I feel like it gets most of its power from the glitter, but it is very, very nice. It's a nice highlight. I'm totally with you. And Julep, I would consider high end for the purposes of this video. Um, Jenny says, Jen is right regarding subtle, but sometimes subtle is what you need. Absolutely, Jenny. Totally agree. Totally agree. I just personally prefer a pop and highlight. Like, even for work, I like my highlight to pop. I don't know. I like a pop and highlight. 
That was just a personal preference. But so, not everybody likes that, though. Not everybody likes that. Fizzy Pop says the Jacqueline palette makes your pores look huge. See, that would be a big difference, too, because if you have pop and pores, like you have big pores, you don't want to be glowing. Like that would the hourglass would probably work much better for somebody that has um, bigger pores because you don't want your pores to be glowing, you know? Um, Tabitha says the copper shade in the Becca palette can be used as a blush topper. That sounds like a great idea. Yep, yeah, Mary Lou. Mary Lou, you can't get through this video without Mary Lou. Mary Luminizer by the bone. Oh. Mary Lou's been my holy grail forever. Um, Cindy Lou, I don't like as much on my skin tone. Cindy Lou's a little bit more pinky kind of color. I don't like it as much. Um, but just so you know, if you don't want to buy Mary Lou, you can also get Lunch Money by ColourPop. It's an exact dupe. It's just a cream formula instead of the powder formula, but it's an exact dupe. So, um, you know, if you were looking at that, just get this instead. And while you're there, get a bunch of lipsticks, too. <laughs> All right, it's 1035. i got to move on to contouring because we're not going to get through everything. Um, okay, so I've mentioned this recently. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed at how much I love these. I feel like contouring powders is one of those things that might be worth investing in for high end. There's one exception. There's one drugstore exception. But every contouring powder or every kind of bronzer I've ever tried to use for, um, oh my gosh, I can smell it all the way over here. Every, sorry, I'm distracted by the smell. Um, I feel like contouring powder, if you're going to invest in anything that's high end and you want to try to contour, and you want to learn to contour, you really need to invest in something that's a little more expensive, in my opinion. Because I feel like the way that these perform make it so you can't really mess it up. You know what I mean? Like, And for me, who's not a makeup artist, I need something like that. I need products that aren't going to allow me to totally mess it up. This is the Burberry Earthy Blush in Light Glow. This is a sample, that uh, deluxe size sample that came in this Burberry box thing that they were selling at Sephora. And I'm so thankful to have this. This is the Kevin Aquan in Medium. Both of these are absolutely phenomenal. But here's my big but. There's always a big but. Always a big but. If you don't want to do that, the e.l.f. Contour Palette is pretty much going to give you the same thing, this shade right here. Um, it's a little bit deeper. Uh, but this would be, this is, this does pretty much the same thing. I know Kaylee smells like my Burberry all the way in Florida. <laughs> totally agree. And and the, this is the thing is I don't understand what why it's so difficult to take a neutral color and turn it into a contour powder. Like I don't get why it's so hard. Like I don't get it for beginners in contouring. Exactly, Sierra. Um, and then Kate, um, Katie Lake says, in my honest opinion, nothing beats Kevin O'Conn's contour powder. Perfect contour color. No red or orange. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Annie says she enjoys the Laura Mercier face illuminator Illuminator in indiscretion. It's her, it's life. <laughs> um, Sammy says, just order the e.l.f. palette on Jen Say So, I mean, it really is good. I want to get the highlighting one. Um, I'm debating about whether I'm going to get the highlighting one because I just did a few orders and I don't know if I can justify getting it. But anyway, the... Definitely the e.l.f. contour palette is phenomenal. It's an exact dupe for the Smashbox contour palette. I have a video where I swatch everything. It's an exact dupe for the Smashbox. Um, but for contouring, I seriously, like, I feel like these are phenomenal. They're phenomenal. I wish they weren't. I wish I could sit here and say, oh, my gosh, they're, they're not worth the hype. <sighs> Um, I can't, I can't, I'm reading comments now. Um, Violetta says she has Park Avenue Princess from way back in the day from Tarte. I think I may have thrown mine away. I found it so dark and I'm not fair. Yeah, I didn't enjoy Park Avenue Princess. It's orangey to me. I didn't enjoy it. I do have it somewhere in a palette and I don't know where right now. She might be here. Yep. Nope. Yep. Right here. There's Park Avenue Princess. It's like bronze. It's bronze. It's definitely not for contouring. It's a bronzer. This this would look ridiculous as a as a contour in my opinion. It's a it's it's shimmery, shimmer. Um, all right, contour. Before we move on from contour, I want to talk about two contour kits. I want to talk about these two. This is the Anastasia contour kit in light medium, and then this is the Kat Von D shade in light. Okay. Um, Kate, oh, Kay Lake says, Jen mentioned the, uh, the Aquan palette. It's sold out online, but it's phenomenal. $65. You can find it in the stores. Um, I've heard great things about the Kevin Aquan contour palette. My friend Lily from Lily Spurgeon on YouTube, she loves the Kevin, the original Kevin Aquan contour palette, but I know there's a new one that's supposed to be really good as well, um, and that it's totally worth it. That's what I've heard. 
Um, Nikki says, if you have yellow olive skin, Park Avenue Princess is really nice, a really nice bronzer. I would imagine that, but I think it would be weird for contour just because of the shimmer that's in it. Um, all right. So if I had to choose between the two of these, see, this is the thing. I really would pick the Lorac. <laughs> if I had to choose between these, I would pick the Lorac one and not these. That's my opinion. I messed up. I totally messed up and got the wrong contour palettes. I should have gotten Lorac. The Lorac one is... I swatched in the store. I've heard such amazing things and I'm crying in my heart that I never got it, but I can't get it because I have too many stinking contour palettes. Um, I, I would I agree. The Anastasia one is my second, uh, second there. I'm not the biggest fan of the Kat Von D shade light. I know that this one's very, very popular, but the shades like this one's orangey. This one's more of a bronzer. Here's your contour shade. This is the only one that I really use. This one's too dark for me. The highlights are really nice. Like this is very nice for an under eye setting powder. I really like it for that. But it's this, I, I don't even know what to do with this except for use it as an eyeshadow. I mean, I'm assuming this is for deeper skin tones and that's why it's there. Um, and this one I've used uh, as a highlight, but it's really like, I have to like dig in it. I feel like it's matte. It just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know a lot of people love this. That's just a personal thing. I mean, it's one of those things. Oh, KJ says the rock colors were orange on her. Oh, no, really? Well, maybe I didn't miss out. <laughs> Valerie says, uh, uh, see, for me, I only have one face, so I don't need an entire palette with a bunch of contour shades. And that's kind of the way I feel about this one is this is definitely for deeper skin tones, and that's not going to work on me. <laughs> And also, I feel like I need a setting uh, spray with this. Uh, I've the past couple times I've mentioned this with friends on YouTube. They've said you got to use it with a setting spray, or else it'll go away. And I definitely need to use this with a setting spray. Absolutely, absolutely. Without a setting spray, this stuff fades within a couple of hours. It's gone. Um, the Anastasia one I think performs just a little bit better, but still, like, get the Elf one is what I'm telling you. Ten bucks, get the Elf one. The Elf one is. I know, I know. I'm being, I'm being honest with you, though. I'm being serious. I don't have contour palette again. I don't know where to start. Um, contouring is really not as bad. You just have to, you just have to practice, is what it comes down to, and learn your face shape. You have to learn your face and how your face works because everybody's is different, and that's the problem with watching tutorials online for contouring is that everybody's face shape is different. So what works for somebody, like when I watch like Kathleen Lights or something, she's got a heart shaped face. Like it doesn't work for me the way that she contours does not work for me. So I had to go to a Sephora class to learn how to do it. But I mean, the general rule is you go from the top of your ear toward, you aim toward here, like playing pool. You know what I mean? Like you have to like aim toward there. And then the, the, the closer you get to your lips, the weirder you look. So start lower like here, and then slowly as you get more comfortable, kind of bring it down a little bit more. When you first start contouring, just like contour to like here. And then really just you want to stop the middle of your eye, like right here, I think. I'm not even looking because I can't see myself right now. But like kind of in the, in the dimples of your cheek is where you stop. But yes, contouring sometimes worth the height in these, but I feel like you can get the e.l.f. with these. That's my opinion. All right, it is 1042. We haven't even gotten into eyeshadows. We haven't gotten into lipsticks. We got lots of stuff still to talk about. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, I meant to talk about Bobby Brown Shimmer Bricks. Bobby Brown Shimmer Bricks are fabulous. I got the wrong color. I shouldn't have gotten apricot, but I can't bear to part with it. Apricot's really for deeper skin tones. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking oh, and I want to talk about brow products, too. I don't know if we're going to get into all that. Let's talk about eyeshadows next. Eyeshadow palettes. Contouring is faking. You're making uh, your face into an oval. You're trying to make your face into an oval. Yeah, well, you're trying to get that shadow underneath your cheekbone to make your cheekbones pop, like, so you look thinner. So you get that like, poppy cheekbone thing going on. And that's why you highlight, too, is to get that. You, um, you have to get in tune with your bone structure. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. And then Helen says, for years they told us not to contour unless we were being photographed. Of course, now we're always being photographed. That's a really good point. That is such a good point, Helen. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and get into eyeshadow. I want to say I have to start here. I have to start here with my new baby. I love this palette. I love this palette. If you are scared of color, I know it looks crazy, but if you want to try color, I would recommend this palette, and I'll tell you why. These shades blend so easily into each other. They're really easy to blend. Like, this is what I look for in an eyeshadow. When I look for an eyeshadow, I look for 
um, that it's pigmented, but not so pigmented that it doesn't move. Because some eyeshadows, you put them on and they stick. And you don't want that because you want to be able to blend into the other colors. These, these blend really nicely. You've also got this beautiful inner wheel here that helps you to make them all kind of get together. Um, these, oh, girlfriend, girlfriend, they're amazing. Um, oh, Tabitha, we're going to get into the Lorac Mega Pro 2. I've got it right back there. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Um, but yes, yes, yes on this, yes, and yes. And yes, yes. Um, the problem with a lot of drugstore palettes is that they're difficult to work with. They work, but they're not as easy to work with. So I feel like investing in some higher end eyeshadows may be something you want to do if you don't want to fight with a drugstore palette. That's for just a general, that's a very general statement. Of course, there are specifics that don't, um, there are specific situations where there are drugstore palettes that will wear like high-end shadows, but for the most part, I feel like the most drugstore palettes are difficult to work with. That's me. Um, Morphe. Ashley's talking about Morphe. I have a Morphe palette coming in the mail. I don't know when it's getting here. I'm hoping on Monday. Um, I just got, because I couldn't get the 35-0 or whatever, I just got like a random other one, and then I built my own palette. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about these since this was brought up. The Lorac Mega Pro and Mega Pro 2. Okay, I own both. I own this one because I was on my friend's Instagram, and she said it was on Amazon, and I popped on it, and I got it. This one I feel like is totally worth the hype. This thing was amazing. It's so fab. Um, it sold out. It was stupid. If you weren't around buying makeup for this, it was the stupidest launch of a palette ever, like ever. And like they lost so much money like not producing more of these like i don't know what the world they were thinking they need to do a you know mega pro redo redo r-e-d-u-x however you say that word you know what i mean because this thing is is the most amazing selection of colors for so many different skin tones there's so many looks you can create and it makes me cry because this isn't available anymore i'm going to close it up and i'm going to show you the two because this is the one that's available for this holiday season. It's right here. Okay, with the two. And I've talked about this a bit before. So if you're around a lot, you've already heard me say this. With the two, this is the thing with the two. Is that it's a weird selection of colors. The shadows perform exactly the same. But it's a weird selection of colors. Um, Violetta says she returned the Mega Pro 2. God, I want the original Mega Pro so bad. Yeah, and, and this is the problem with it. Like, why in the world would you put... This is a yellow tone matte. This is a, um, a like a cream matte. This is a little bit pinkier of a cream matte. This is a shimmery cream. This is a yellowy cream. I mean, what is really the difference between these two? This is a matte, and this is a matte. And this one, you know, they're pretty much the same color. Why would you do that? Why would you do with that? Like, like, what's wrong with you? There's no taupe in here, like, which angers me to no end. You have all these choices, and you don't put in a taupe? Like, Where's the neutral transition color? Like, what is wrong with you, LaRock, for not putting a taupe in there? Like, who designed this thing without a taupe? What's wrong with you? Vice Force coming up next, Angie. We'll talk about that. And Chocolate Bar Palette, it's the thing that I keep looking at and wanting to get. I need to just suck it up and get it. I do. I need to just suck it up and get it. Um, Vizzy Art, I've heard, is amazing as well. Jenny, I've heard the same thing. Um, all right, we're off topic. So anyway, Mega Pro 2. I feel like this is a good supplemental palette, meaning that if you have already have like a nice base of eyeshadows and you want to add to your collection some really awesome colors, exactly, Steph, where's the taupe, man? Where's the taupe? If you want to add to your collection some really awesome colors, I definitely recommend getting the Mega Pro 2. Absolutely. But if you are only want one holiday palette, this is not it. Like, this is not for someone that doesn't have a lot of makeup because it's going to be annoying to work with. That's my opinion. Unless you're skilled, unless you're, like, super mad skilled, you're going to have to pull from somewhere else because I don't see how to use this to make even one look by itself without a taupe. Like, I need a taupe. I need it in my life. So, anyway, that's kind of how I feel about this. Busy Art is pricey. I've never tried it. Never tried it. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't, I'm not even going to say it because I'm, I'm going to get myself in trouble. All right. No, I'm going to say it. All right. Manny MUA got a uh, Vizzy Art palette in like some kind of swag bag. I was watching a swag bag video and he's like pulling it up. And you can tell he totally has never even seen it before. And he's like, oh, this is a nice palette. And he's like, he pulls out another one. He's like, oh, I got two of them. 
they give me two of the same palette and I'm like, that's a Vinzy Art palette. Give it to me, man. Don't tell me, don't complain that you got two of them. Like, give it to me. It's amazing. Like, it, oh my gosh, like disturb me. Like, no, <laughs> I understand getting mad about getting two of the same palette, but it was a Vinzy Art palette. And every time I see Vinzy Art, I think of that video and how he was so upset about getting two of the exact same Vinzy Art palette. It's like, oh, oh my gosh. But anyway, I do love Manny. I love Manny in person. Manny in person is such a nice guy. Absolutely. All right. Anyway. <sighs> All right. Alexandria. Hi. It says, I mixed two brown shades on top, Gem, for my crease shade. Well, that's good to know. Let me say, what are you talking about, Alexandria? Two brown shades on the top. You talking about these babies up here? They're so warm, though. They're so warm. Unless you're warm toned. I don't know. I don't know, girlfriend. I don't know if I can pull that off. I can try it. I'm going to try it. Vice 4. Vice 4 is coming now. All right, Vice 4. Vice 4. Oh, Vice 4. Oh, Vice 4. Vice 4, I want to love you. I do. It's one of those things where, like, do you ever date a guy? He's, like, a really nice guy. And it's like, man, like, you're such a nice guy. But there's just something just not, there's just something missing. You know what I mean? Like, he's beautiful, he's smart, he's talented in some way, but just something's missing, and you're just like, mm, mm, no, no, not really working. So that's the way I feel about the vice board. That's the way I feel about it. I want to get upside down so that the mirror doesn't glare in your eyes. It's got some beautiful shades, but some of them are not good. And some of them, oh, Annie says, I want to cry. My vice for destroyed my life. I saw it. Annie said, Annie, like, what did, did you drop it or something? Like somehow, and all the pans fell out. Like I have a picture of it. Let me see. I snapped a photo of it because I couldn't believe that I had to save it of Annie's uh, palette. Let me show you. Hold on a second. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to show you Annie's palette. What happened to her vice for? Because I think you need to see this. I literally snapped a picture of it on my phone right here. Look at Annie's palette. Can you see that? Like, what? What? It says, my jaw dropped so hard, I may, <laughs> I may have pooped or something. I started watching Total Makeup Junkie 101 and was like, let me grab mine. I hadn't even swatched it yet and flipped it to grab the brush, and six of the pans fell out into her hand. What? Mine has not had that problem, thankfully. Mine still works. Mine's good. But you can see how much I've used it. Like, not. I need to use it more. I need to play with it more. But, yeah, exactly. Exactly, Annie. See? That's how much. This is from the What's Up in Makeup app. I screen capped that to save it in case I needed it. And I'm so glad that I did because easy access. But this is, oh. There's some beautiful shades in here. Don't get me wrong. Like, I really, really like this one. This one's called Flame. This one right here. I really like that one a lot. But, like, low leaves like glitter all over my cheeks by the end of the day. Um, some of them are difficult to work with. Like, I don't know. This is not one that I would recommend either. I'm going to keep it because I like it enough to keep it. Like I like some of the shades. They're fun to play with, but, and plus it's beautiful. Packaging is beautiful. So I'm going to keep it, but I wouldn't recommend this one either. Yes. Krista says my naked palettes have pans that fall out. You know what? I have, this is my naked too. Look. That is booty call. But granted, I've had this for two years, and it took a year and a half for this one to start falling out. But yes. Talk about worth, worth the hype, though. Naked 2 is worth the hype. If I can get my hands on that Naked Vault, I'm getting it. Totally getting it. Totally getting it. Um, and, and I really feel like these are in a whole Urban Decay class of their own, these. Especially the original Naked, from what I've heard, the Naked 2. I've heard some people are in love with the Naked 3. Naked Smoky, I haven't heard so much about. I don't even really know. Oh, my goodness, it's 10.53. We haven't even talked about mascaras and lip products. Ooh. Oh, my goodness, I need to shut up. Shut up about eyeshadow. Let's move on. we got to move on. Oh, before we move on, Tartlet Palette, my friend Veronica sent this to me because it didn't work for her, and I can tell you it didn't work for me either. Um, Tarte eyeshadows do not work for me for some reason. I feel like they're not worth the hype. I don't know. Has anybody ever had um, a Tarte shadow, Tarte Palette work for them that they love? Eyeshadow palette, anybody? Anybody? I don't know. Every chart palette I've ever gotten, like, they don't work for me. I don't know what's up with that. Vault is on Ulta. Go, go. No, it's not. Oh, shut up. I can't go now. I have six more minutes left to chat. Oh, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. 
All right, hold on, hold up. I got to see if it's there. I got to see if you're right. Let's look. Let's look together. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can get there. Is it going to work? Hold on a minute. Nope. Hold on a minute. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Let's see. Let's try that. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is that? Okay. Are you guys seeing this? Okay, let's go. Let's go to Ulta. See if you can see. Ah! Hold on. It's not here, man. It's not there. Can you guys see this? Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Shop this brand. Sort by new. It's not there, man. Ah. You got me all excited. It's not there. <sighs> all right. Let me flip, flip, flip back over. Hold up. Hopefully you guys saw that. Okay. Hold on a minute. Did you guys, I don't know if you guys can, because I look like, I feel like you guys are looking at me right now. Did I totally just mess that up? Okay, let me go back. Hold on. Let me go back to chat because I can't see what just happened here. Live chat. Okay. I was looking for the vault. It says it's sold on, yeah, it was on the U Urban Decay. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's not on Ulta's website. I just looked. All right. You were supposed to be looking at the Ulta screen. I think I messed it up, but it was, it was totally anticlimactic because it wasn't there anyway. All right. Rewind. Saw Space Invaders. We are looking at you now. Okay. As long as everybody's here looking at me now, we're good. It wasn't there. I sent. I I did put in like the little email thing to let me know when it um when it comes back. The vault. The naked vault. I just flipped out for a second. We went off topic. But we're gonna go back on topic because I have four minutes left. I don't think I'm gonna have to stay on longer because we only got four minutes and we got lots to talk about. Let's talk about lip products. So for lip products, my favorite high-end lip product is the Too Faced Creme, Le Creme Lipsticks. I love these things. This one's a Naughty Nude. These are my two favorite shades. Naughty Nude and Pink Chocolate are my two faves. Love these. Totally feel like they're worth the hype. I feel like lip products overall in general for high-end, for the most part, are my favorites. Got an email about it this morning. Man, it was an hour. <sighs> you guys are killing me, dude. You're breaking my heart right now about it being sold out. All right, Tarte Rainforest After Dark it was a great palette, Tina says. Okay, I only tried the Tarte eyeshadows from Holiday QVC palette two years ago. Did they get better? Mm. Mm -hmm. Not in my opinion. All right, but anyway, love these. Love these, love these. Okay, Bite Beauty lipsticks are phenomenal. I got this with Yesenia when we went to the Bite Beauty Lab. That video should be out this week. That's the shade that I made, and I love it. I love it, but I have a couple other Bite Beauty lipsticks, and I love Bite Beauty lipsticks. Urban Decay, the um, I I got this set. This is the um, whatever, what are these called? The the Revolution lipsticks. The only these aren't the matte ones. These are the regular ones. The regular Revolution lipsticks. This one is in Naked. I like that one a lot. This one is an F bomb. It's a really nice bright shade, and I like this formula. It doesn't have a smell, so if you don't like smells, this will be a good one. Um, I don't have, I don't, I don't ever reach for lip pencils, period. Um, this one is called Turn On, but I have a bunch of these, and I really like this formula a lot. I do like the, um, the Bite Beauty and the Too Faced better, though. Um, I want a Tom Ford lipstick, too. You and me both, girlfriend. Um, MAC lipsticks, I have a few. I have a few more than this, but I have a few MAC lipsticks. I feel like with MAC lipsticks, you have to find the formula that you like. Personally, I'm a luster girl. I really like the luster finish ones. Um, I have I have Viva Glam 5, which is a frost. That was by accident. I didn't mean to get this one. I traded. I don't like this one. I don't like the frosts. Um, I also am not a big fan of their mattes at all. I don't really like them. Um, the cream sheens, I'm not a big fan of. Um, I'm a, I love the lusters. That's just me personally. Um, we're going to go into mascaras in just a minute, sweetheart. Uh, but if anybody wants to answer early, that's fine. Um, for Tarte lipsticks, okay, Tarte lipsticks, this one I have recently fallen in love with. This one is in Park Avenue Princess, and I'm really, really loving this. It's super, super sheer, so if you want, like, just a really sheer, nudie kind of lipstick, this one's really, really good, but I don't like their other lipsticks. Every other Tarte lipstick I've ever bought, I have not liked, but I really, really like this one. Um, Jenny says she likes the luster ones, too. Um, Nikki says the Clinique Pop lipsticks are nice, nice too. I don't have any of those. Um, Shannon says the Kat Von D pretty much in everything else, um, but I find her lipsticks very dry. I've never tried her lipsticks. 
lipsticks, but I will tell you that the um, liquid lipsticks I do like. They are extremely drying though, so you have to like, I keep a lip balm in my pocket and just apply a lip balm over top, which kind of kills some of the matte, but I love the colors and I love the staying power. The staying power is insane on these, so I really, really like these a lot. I did not like the Anastasia. Asia lip liquid lipsticks, but I've heard that they've changed their formula and it's better now. Um, but I did not like the ones that I got from them. I, I like the Kat Von D's much, much better, but I don't feel like these are that much better than the ColourPop ones. I would get the ColourPop ones over these. That's my opinion. I did recently get a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and I'm absolutely in love with it. This one is in the shade Hepburn Honey and it smells, smells so good. It just smells like frosting. Smells amazing. Just like candy, frosting, amazing, sugary awesomeness i haven't ever tried a steel lipstick i have no idea i know their lip glosses are very 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 ordinary very ordinary um but that's it for as far as my lipstick recommendations for high end i want to get into mascara since we're it's 11 o'clock and we're running out of time um thank you very much for talking to each other about things um krista says that um audacious lipsticks are amazing that is good to know for mascara, if I were to recommend any high-end mascara, I would recommend the Urban Decay Perversion. I feel like this one totally lives up to the hype. It's amazing. It's fabulous. Does all those things a mascara is supposed to do. Lengthen, volumizing, no flaking, no clumping, none of that. It's seriously awesome. Uh, Nikki says, honestly, I get ColourPop. I want to get high-end high lip... Wait. I honestly just get ColourPop if I want high-end lipstick. I'm going to want high-end. The mild range, the mid-range are just meh for me. Okay. Sorry. Just took me a second to read that. Um... Rusty Apple says food candy lips products are not safe combination. It's not that it has food in it, man. It just smells like it. I like the way it smells. By um the La Volume de Chanel Valerie says is her favorite. But I really I've never tried that one. But I really, really love this. Um I will say though, one that is not worth the hype is this new NARS. Um the NAR this is uh, the Audacious Mascara and Black Moon. This did not work for me at all. It did absolutely nothing for me. I mean, look at this wand. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like the the little bristles, little rubber bristles are spaced so far apart. And it just, I mean, it combs through my lashes, but the formula is not good to me. It's not good to me. Jenny says Tarte Lights Camera Lashes holds her curl and it's awesome. I like Tarte, like Tarte Lights Camera Lashes. I think mascara is kind of like foundation in that everyone has such different lashes, different things work for them. Um, but this one did not work for me at all, at all. Like I know, like, it actually made me angry because I know how much this thing costs. Um, it's, of course, it's a deluxe sample. I forget how I got this. I think I got it with points, so four points or something. Um, Nikki says she likes the Better Than Sex um, and the Clinique High Impact Volume Mascara. Um, the Better Than Sex Mascara, I, I felt like it volumized almost too much to the point where I felt like it was clumping my lashes together so much it just bothered me. But some people may not bother, you know what I mean? Uh, Shannon says she hated the NARS mascara. It was super wet and clumped her lashes horribly. Um, I have the roller lash. I feel like the roller lash for me with the natural curl that I have in my lashes was not anything magical. It's a good mascara, but it wasn't magical for me. Um, I would not repurchase this personally, but I've heard with people that really like to hold a curl in their lashes that this works very, very well. Um, one thing I also want to show you that's new to me is the IT Cosmetics mascara. I just got this at Generation Beauty. Really like this one a lot. The only thing about this one is there was one morning I was getting ready on Periscope and I got some of this in my eye and it burned my eyes so bad like I must have gotten a big clump or something in my eyes I mean I know that's not what you're supposed to do with it but just beware if you get this and you accidentally get some in your eye it hurts really 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 bad um, Liz says I have Dior mascara and I hate it no volume or length at all I got it in a kit I got a Dior mascara and I felt the exact same way about it um, another thing I wanted to mention that is worth the hype is a Lancome Sills Booster XL down um, mascara primer this stuff is phenomenal now it is white though so you want to make sure that you have a very opaque mascara to go over top of it or you will be able to see the white through it so just be careful with that um, but it definitely like you can use this with any mascara you put it on first it makes your lashes white it lengthens them volumizes them you put your black mascara over top totally works totally works it's amazing I've tried the Dior one I don't like the Dior one as much as this one I love this one it is so amazing so amazing. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, one thing I wanted to mention too that's new to me is this Tardis um, eyeliner. This one I've been using quite a bit and I've been practicing with it. I love the way it looks initially. I love the way it applies all of that, but I feel like it flakes off. Um, especially if I try to do a wing with it, forget it. Like it, the, the wing will not last like through the day. 
it'll be gone. So it's got its pluses and minuses. If you're not planning on doing a wing, you may really like this, but um, if you touch your eyes at all, it's gonna be gone. It's gonna flake right off. So, you know, um, Gina says she got the Sills loving it at night for a conditioner. Oh, that's good to know. Um, Kaylee says little black primer works, doesn't seem to go on, but when you add another layer of whatever on top, you can totally tell that it worked, but it's Estee Lauder and not cruelty free. Um, let's see. Nelly says, I like the Subversion Lash Primer and Sir Holy Grail an hour ahead. Yes. All right. Let's see. Um, before we go, was there anything else that I want to talk to you about? Oh, brows. Talk about brows a little bit. We didn't talk about brows. Brows, brows. Anastasia is known for Anastasia. Anastasia is known for her brow products. Uh, let's talk a little bit about those. This one is the um, the Dip Brow Pomade. It's very, very famous. If you like Instagram brows, this is great for you. Um, it, you just got to be careful. You got to make sure you spoolie it out. Um, so, you know, that's that. The brow powder is also very nice. Really like that a lot. Um, this one is in Brunette Dark Brown. This one works very, very well filling in my spaces. I do not care for her um, the gel. What is this? What's this called? Clear brow gel. It smells horrible. The smell kills me. Absolutely kills me and makes my eyebrows feel crunchy. I don't like that at all. Um, I also the um, the I couldn't find it right before we before I turned on the camera, but the um, which call it eyebrow pencil, the brow whiz. I feel like it's totally doable. It's a nice brow pencil, but it's totally doable. Totally, totally, totally. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention as far as brow products, the Benefit Gimme Brow. Look at this. Look at the essence. Didn't look like essence was like, dude. We can do a benefit gimme brow. Um, but honestly, I like the essence just as much. The only thing is, is I have this one is in blonde. I need to get one that's my shade. I got this at Generation Beauty. Um, and I don't, um, it's the wrong shade. But I, I do really like it. I feel like it works just as well as this one. I did not like the uh, Maybelline Brow Drama. Look at this thing. Unless you have the brows of a giantess, this is not going to be good. Like, look at that. The thing is gigantic. I get product all over my face. The wand kills it, and it smells bad, too. So I don't like that one. If I were going to get one from the drugstore, I would get the, um, the Essence one is nice. Um, and yes, the Essence one. Yes. Um, let's see. Tina says, I have very thick brows, so I don't have to do much to clean them up. I mainly use the Benefit Gimme Brow. Yeah, the Benefit Gimme Brow does work. It's nice, but it's got a nice little brush. It's nice, um, but it doesn't fill in my spaces. Like I have spaces, like you can see my, my brows are pretty sparse. So I need a pencil or a powder to fill those in. And then this would be like a topper on top. Tabitha says, steal his own hot look. Yay, that's exciting. I'll have to check that out as soon as we sign off. Uh, Nikki says, I can't remember the elf what I'm talking about, but it's a white liner tube. Okay, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I don't, oh, you love the crunchy. Wait, Tatarlatan. I don't know what your real name is. I'm assuming it's not Tatarlatan. But, <laughs> but I don't like crunchy brows. It bothers me all day. I'm like this. It's like crunchy hair, like when men have the crunchy hair. Like I can't even stand it. I can't even stand it. So anyway, oh, eyeliner. We didn't talk about eyeliner. Look at all these things we didn't talk about. It's 11.07. I got to get going. But I wanted to talk to you guys about eyeliner. The liquid eyeliners, the Stila Stay All Day is a really good option. Also, the um, Kat Von D Tattoo Liner and Trooper is also a really good option. But if you want to get a drugstore option, the Jessie's Girl Eyeliner, I always talk about all the time, is amazing. Jessie'sGirlCosmetics.com. I think it's like 10 bucks. Totally, totally just as good as the Stila and the Kat Von D. So I wouldn't I wouldn't get these. I would get the, the, the Jessie's Girl one. Absolutely. And you get more product. I think too. Um, the It Cosmetics Brow Powder, I didn't mention this one either. This one is really nice getting the Anastasia one. This one a lot. Uh, I feel like it's pretty much the same. I think it's a little bit cheaper. For eyeliner pencils, I honestly don't like the Urban Decay Glide On Eye Pencils. They drip down my waterline and get messy. Uh, so I honestly, I would prefer the, the Sephora ones are fantastic. They're amazing. Also, the, um, the Mr. Right Now is from the Balm are also amazing. These are also um, a little bit more expensive. This, the Sephora one's probably the cheapest out of all of them. Um, let's see, I'm gonna read some of the things. Leslie's talking about, oh, a Annette says the Starlux pen liner is awesome. Oh, um, Tabitha's here, there's another Tabitha. Um, let's see, hold on a minute. Maddie says yes to the still liquid eyeliner. Oh my gosh, they're going so fast. Jenny says Mark, Mark Jacobs eyeliner. Um, Katie says Hourglass has a great brow pencil. And then Tina says Lorac front of the pro liner 
front of the pro liner. Oh, okay. Picked up the Jesse's Girl and can't wait to give it a try. Let me know what you think, Tina. Um, KJ says eyeliner Inglot only for me. Nothing else stays on for you. I got, is it the gel one? I got the gel one. It was okay for me. It was okay. It didn't blow me away. But that's just me. Like, you know, it doesn't mean, you know. Um, everyone's saying they love the Jesse's Girl. My light is looking for something darker. Really? It's not dark enough? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, everyone's saying the Marc Jacobs ones are amazing. That's good to know. Good morning, Boston Barbie doll. Um, the It Cosmetics Brow Liner is great, according to Betty Ann. Uh, Russell's round the clock didn't run in the water line. That's very good to know. Fantastic. Um, so that, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. I have a lot of other things that I didn't get to. Like I want to talk about the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill. Um, and I got these from my friend Lily. Uh, she sent these to me and I do really like these, but I don't think that they're that much better than the, the L'Oreal Infallibles. I would say get the L'Oreal Infallibles unless you can't find a dupe shade and you really want to try the Armani Eyes to Kill. Um, but the, the Infallibles are just as good in my opinion. But I pretty much talked about everything I wanted to talk about. And it's 1110. I got to get going. I'm going to try to edit a video so I can put up more, more than one video other than what's been made up this week. That's my goal is to put up two at least. So I'm going to go edit some videos. And it's going to be Yesenia and I's visit to the Bite Beauty Lab. That's coming up next. I want to film some subscription box openings. I've got some reviews coming up, stuff like that. So um, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and click over so I can see myself. And thank you to everybody for participating in chat. Again, if you know that you dropped some gems in the chat window and you want those to stay, please take a moment to go down to the comment section and type in some of your favorites so that when people come back to this video, they can reference back because the chat window disappears. It's gone. So um, please do, do me a favor and take a second and type some of your, um, your favorite high-end products or things that you don't think are worth the hype in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. I just realized that my hair is really bright next to this sweater. Really bright. I wasn't looking at myself the whole time. So, um, but yes, I thank you so much for being here and we'll be back in chat next week at 11 a.m. Eastern time, uh, not 11 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern time next Sunday. Uh, we'll be doing the 5 p.m. chat. It looks like on November 29th will be the 5 p.m. chat. So on the 8th, the 15th and the 22nd will be at uh, 10 a.m. And then the 29th will be at 5 p.m. So I thank you so much for being here. You guys are so awesome. I learned so much from you guys. Hopefully you learned a little bit from me. I know I learned a lot from you and mad love. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Have a good day.